Again, glad you guys are here. And, and don't forget, this coming Wednesday is our first Wednesday service. We have a first Wednesday every, uh, every first Wednesday of the month. And so that's happening here at 7 o'clock this coming week. Uh, but today I, I want to talk to you a little bit uh, about a, a passage in, in the scripture that I've kind of been reflecting on over the last, you know, couple of weeks. I've been just kind of meditating on it, thinking about it, and, and I've had a couple conversations with some people about this particular passage, and, and I, want, I want us to kind of take a look at it here today. It's, it's found in, in Matthew chapter 20, and, and it speaks of, of how, you know, the model that Christ gave us for life. And I want to show you that here today. I want us to hear God's heart. And I'm going to take you here to Matthew chapter 20. And I'm going to read a pretty long passage here. But, but I want you to see what, what God is saying to us. Here in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 through 28. Listen to what it says. On this one occasion, it says, And the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. Picture that. Here's this mother coming with her two boys, and she's coming before Christ. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, Jesus asked. She replied, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drip? Drink the bitter cup of suffering I'm about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied, we are able. Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. My father has prepared these places for the ones he has chosen. When the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. But Jesus called them together and said, you know, that the rulers in this world lorded, lorded over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Can somebody say different? different? He said, whoever wants to be a leader among you, he says, must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. Amen. And so here's this, this picture, this mother. You know how sometimes when sons can't ask for something, the mother, I, I got to say, the, these boys may have been mama's boys. <laughs> because here comes mama to talk to Jesus. See, they probably had gone home and said, well, go ask him. Well, we're not going to ask him. And so she said, well, I'll go ask him for you guys. And so here she comes with her two sons and asking Jesus. Jesus, he says, I need to ask, I need to ask you a favor. He says, can, when, when you enter into your kingdom, can, can you put both of my sons in places of power and authority and position? Can you put one on your right and one on your, on your left? And Jesus says, oh, you don't know what you're asking. But he utilizes that moment to teach us a truth. And the truth, my friends, is, is the title of my message today. It's a, different, it's a different way. When Jesus showed up on this earth, he came to model a different way of, of serving and particularly of leadership. And he speaks to them. He says, listen, he goes, you, you look at the people around you. You look at those, you know, who are in positions of authority. He says, and they, they push you down. They lord it over you, that authority that they have. He says, but I, I want to show you that it's going to be different with you because it's different with me. And what Jesus came to model is what we see in this passage right here. He says, whoever wants to be a leader among you, he says, must be your servants. Whoever wants to be first, he says, I know that's what people seek after. That's what people desire. People want, you know, title, position, and power. He says, but I want to tell you that he says, my way is different than the ways of the world. He says, if you desire to be a leader, that means you're going to be a servant. Matter of fact, the scripture says a slave of all. And he says, if you want to be first, he says, he says you're going to be last. So it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. 
And Jesus says, who, and then he says this, he says, for the Son of Man came not to be served. And we're familiar with this passage. But to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so when Jesus showed up on this earth 2,000 years ago, he turned things around. He modeled a different way of being a leader, a different way to serve others. And he, he, he walked in that way, but, but he modeled that so that you and I could follow in the example that he left us behind. And so I want to I wanna talk with you about that here today because, see, to carry the mark of a Christian means to serve. To carry the mark of a Christian means to serve. Because Christ was a servant. He said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. And so even calling yourself a Christian or believing in Christ, what that actually does to us, my friends, is it makes us servants. Because to know Christ means to serve like Christ. And so I want to talk to us about that here today. Four significant truths, four significant truths about why we serve God, why do we serve him, and how do we serve God? Because if being a Christian means to be a servant, then why do we serve and how do we serve God? I want to share those with you here today. How do we carry on the legacy of Christ today? Here's the first way, my friends. It is to choose to love. Choose to love. That's how we serve God. That's how we, we, we serve God in the way he wants us to serve is choose to love because that's what Christ did for us. You see, love, my friends, contrary to popular belief, is not primary, primarily a feeling. Love is a choice. Love is a choice that we make to care about somebody else, to serve someone else, to love someone else. And there is no greater, greater example of this truth than in a marriage relationship. You know that. It's actually the place where you are challenged the most. And so if you're here today and you're saying you're so eager to get married, get ready to get challenged the most the minute you say, I do. You know, sometimes when we have this illusion of marriage, our, our, our expectations are not accurate. When you say, I do, you actually became a slave to your spouse. You're like, what? <laughs> yes, as a husband, you become a slave to your wife. And as a wife, you become a slave to your husband. You're like, what? No, don't tell me that. A slave, you become a servant. You become a servant to each other. You serve one another. And how do you do that? By choosing to love. Choose to love. That's, that's how we serve God. That's how we serve the Lord. Because love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. You feel love, but love is a choice that we make every day. I can choose to love, or I can choose not to. To serve, though, my friends, to serve means to love. Serving God and others is an expression of love. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says this, For God demonstrates his own love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What was that, my friends? That was, that was service motivated by love. God so loved us, even when we didn't deserve it, but he made a choice to love us. And that's what it means. That's how we serve, is we choose to love. Christ's love, my friends, Christ, I should say it to you like this. Christ's love for us should inspire us to serve him. L listen to the way Titus chapter 3 puts it. It says, but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy 
spirit. And so Christ's love for us is what inspires us to serve him and to serve others. You see, choosing to love, my friends, is not an easy choice. Because love requires that we make sacrifices. That's what love is. But, but, but we, we're going we're gonna to follow in the example that Jesus left us. Think about that. It says, when God's kindness and his love appeared, he saved us, watch, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Amen. And so every day... As a person who is marked by Christ through the Holy Spirit, we should walk every day with this attitude in our mind that, that I have been saved by God's grace, not by the righteous things I have done. Because of his mercy, I have received his grace. And when we meditate on that, it inspires us. And that's why Jesus was saying to, those, to that mother and those two, two men, he said, you, you don't know what you're asking. See, you're, in your mindset, you have the idea of a leader or of somebody who has a title or a position that is going to give directions and people are going to follow what you say. He says, but in fact, you're going to model what it is that you're asking somebody to do. You're going to be a servant. That's what it is that Jesus was saying. I did not come to be served, but to serve. And to be a Christian means to serve. We serve, my friends. We serve God because he served us. That's why we're inspired to serve, because we think about how he served us. Let me continue. Here, here, here's the second reason why we serve and, and, and how we serve God. Serving others, my friends, transforms you. See, serving is good for you and me. It does something in our hearts. It does something in our lives. It transforms us. When you follow the, the model of serving like Christ, it changes you and it transforms you into a new person, into a different kind of person. Philippians chapter 2 describes, again, how Christ took on a spirit of humility to serve us. Listen to what it says. It says, and he instructs us to do the same. He says, don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a servant and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself even obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Ain't that amazing what Jesus did for us? Amen. You know what inspires us to serve God and to serve mankind is thinking about this, thinking about what Christ has done for us. It's what makes me wake up every day and do what I do serve others, as I think about what Jesus did for me, I think about how he modeled servanthood, and it inspires me to keep serving. Amen. See, when you serve, you make sacrifices for others just like Christ did for you. Amen. When you serve, that's what you're doing. When you serve, you are following in the footsteps of Christ. You are making sacrifices of your time, of your energy, of your heart, of your passion, you're saying no to other things so that you can say yes to God. You're making sacrifices in the same way that God makes sacrifices for you and me. Amen. And that's how he served us. And so don't ever feel guilty for serving God. Know that you're following in his footsteps. Amen. Don't ever feel like, man, I just, I don't know. I'm giving too much. Listen, my friends, it's hard to outgive God. Let me say this statement to you. It's one of, the, one of the values that we have and we believe here at DTC is this, is that you are never more like Christ than when you serve. You're never more like Christ than when you serve. See, that's what serving does for us. My when we serve others, we're following in Christ's footsteps, and it transforms our life 
to become more and more like Jesus. And do you know, my friends, that at the end of the day, God's goal in your life, I know we all have goals, we all have aspirations, we all have dreams, we want to achieve tasks, we want to achieve our goals, we want to achieve our dreams, and those are not necessarily bad things. Those can be good things. But can I tell you that the ultimate goal of God's life in your life is not to necessarily help you to achieve the dream that you have or the goal that you have. His ultimate goal is to help you to look more like Jesus before you leave this earth. That's it. And do you know what God uses in our life to do that? A lot of different things. Sometimes it's trials and tribulations. Sometimes it's problems as a way to be, shape us, to transform us, to look more like him. And it's to helping us to serve because serving helps us to become more like Jesus. Christ came to serve us. And the way we honor him is by taking on the same attitude and serving others. We serve God because he served us. Here's the third truth I want to share with you. Is how do we serve? Is we serving, I should say, serving helps others get close to God. Serving helps others get close to God. And think about why did God why did God send his son into the world, my friends? For us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. It didn't say that God loved the plants of the world. He loved the creation. He loved people. And because people matter to God, people should matter to us who believe in him. People are God's greatest passion and his greatest possession. The reason Jesus went to the cross, my friends, is because he was thinking about people like you and me. He was thinking about what had bound us in the past. He was thinking about our suffering, our pain, and he wanted to set us free, and so he went to the cross. What does that mean? It demonstrates that people are Christ's greatest passion. It's us. It's why he went to the cross. People matter to Jesus and people should matter to us. Amen. When you serve, you help others get close to God in the same way that Christ served you so that you could get close to God. Can I say that again? When you serve others to help them get close to God, you are doing what Christ did for you so that you could get close to God. See, the scripture says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father except through me. And so Jesus came to serve us. He built a bridge for us so that we could get to the Father. And when we serve others in the different manners, in the different ways that we serve people, we are building a bridge so that they can get close to God as well. And that's an honor. That is a privilege that God gives us. You know, I think about some of the ways that, that people serve. I think about some of the ways that people serve in the house of the Lord. I think about some of the ways that people serve the church of Christ. You know, I think about, you know, our parking team out there during the summer, rain, sleet, or, well, maybe not snow, but <laughs> maybe rain, sleet, and hell, heat of hell outside during the summer. But they're out there serving. They're serving so that, so that people can have a, so they're building a bridge so that people can get closer to God. So that people have, have easy access to God. So that, you don't, so that you don't lose the salvation that you just got when you came here and you're leaving before you leave the parking lot. They're trying to help you to not lose your salvation. When you serve on, our hospi on the hospitality team, I think about the atmosphere that you're helping to create of, of, uh, to others so that others can connect with God. I think about our prayer team and the people who serve in our prayer team, helping people to build a connection with God through a prayer line. They're helping people's prayers to be answered. When you serve on the live production team, what are you doing? You're helping people to connect with God through worship. And through reaching people on the other side of this camera. 
Thank you for that. Do you know that our services, you know, reach several parts of the world, my friends? Not just our state, our nation, but other countries around the world are, are tuning in and watching the messages that we're delivering here today because there is somebody willing to stand behind a camera and run sound equipment so that can, people can hear. That's how we serve. We're serving others so that others can have a connection with God. You know, I think about, you know, when you serve in the kids' ministry, what are you doing? You're helping children to connect with God at their level. You know, that's why it's so important that we teach our children the ways of the Lord, because as you can tell in the world today, my friends, the world seems to be drifting further and further away from the ways of God. But we can capture, you know, our kids' heart when they're young. So that when they're old, they already have the foundation of faith in their life. I'm grateful that my parents led me to church when I was young because they, they sowed the seed of faith in my heart so that as I grew older, that foundation would always be there. And when you serve in the kids' ministry, you are helping to set that foundation in kids' heart so that it will help them later on in life. You're helping to do that. You know, recently we had a, one of our, our, our big kids' events here at church, and I want to show you this video as, as, as one of our kids, Amber, describes her experience and how she was served here uh, through our SFW event. T take a look at this. <laughs> SFW stands for Summer Fun Week. describe it as like really fun and like learning at the same time and having a memorized verse and like just having so much fun. My favorite part about Summer Fun Week is when we were in the moon drop I was like jumping with a lot of kids and we were playing tag. Thank you for everyone for decorating. I really liked how it was. I liked how it was because it gave like a vibe. So the verse was, grabs how wide, high, Deep is the love of Christ. My name is Amber and thank you for everyone who helped uh, like de decorate Summer Fun Week. I liked how it was because like it had an amazing vibe, like ocean vibe. I liked it. So thank you to everyone. That's awesome. And so thank you guys. Thank you guys for, for always getting behind what's happening here. But, you know, every single week we, we serve kids in our kids' ministry. We serve people. We serve our community. And what, what did Amber say? Serving gives a good vibe. Come on, somebody. We're never more like Christ than when we serve my friends, you know. God has called us to do so, and it's an honor for us to do it because he served us first. Here, here's the fourth truth I want to share with you, and, and it's this, is that serve with eternity in mind. Serve with eternity in mind. See, I think when we, when we, when we serve others, when we serve God, we should serve thinking about eternity because it's not, it is about this life, but it's also about what is still to come. There's two truths that we know for sure about eternity, my friends. That in eternity, there will be eternal punishment and there will be eternal rewards. Those are two truths that we know about eternity. Eternal punishment and eternal rewards. Listen to the way this is described in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body whether good or bad. 
Serving Christ, my friends, it has rewards for the life that is still to come. Remember, we only get a few years here on this side of eternity, and we spend the next thousand years in eternity. And so we should serve with eternity in mind. You know, one of the things that inspires me to serve God is thinking about eternity. Because I realize that I'm not just serving for now, I'm also serving for what is yet to come. And what did Jesus tell us about eternal rewards? He says, don't store up for yourself just treasures on earth. Don't spend all your time just accumulating tr earthly treasures, he says, but also store up treasures for yourself in heaven, in eternity. And this judgment seat that is being spoken of here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that is in front of every single one of us. Well, every day, one of these days, you and I are going to sit before the judgment seat of Christ, and Christ is going to judge us for the good and the bad, what we did while we were in this light, to determine the rewards that we have in the next one. Do you know that this particular judgment right here is actually, this particular one right here is only speaking of the one for believers. This judgment is not for unbelievers. They're going somewhere else. So if you do not find yourself at the judgment seat of Christ, or let me say it to you like this, if you do find yourself at the judgment seat of Christ, you should be there with a smile because you made it. You're in the right place. If you don't make it, if you're not at the judgment seat of Christ, I'll leave that there. See, this is, this is for believers. This judgment right here is only for believers. There, there's other judgments the scripture speaks about, but this particular one is talking to believers. And it's Jesus saying, he's a, a, in this judgment, he's a, see, he says, you, God is going to, Christ is going to judge you, and he says, you, you're going to receive what is due for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. You know, one of the statements that, that, that we're familiar with from the scripture that you often hear as believers speak and, and they will say things like, you know, man, when I leave this earth, you know, I, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Right? It's, 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 I, I want to hear that. I want to know that I, that I served the Lord well. I want to know that I did, you know, what God asked me to do, that I did his will. And we should strive for that. But I want you to think about what we're saying there. Well, do, well done, my good and faithful servant servant my good and faithful servant see to know Christ means to serve to know Christ means to be a servant the mark of a Christian my friends is also the mark of servanthood and so to hear at the end of our day when we move on from this life well done my good and faithful servant what must we do we must serve because we've been called to serve God and to serve his purposes. And so, so what am I saying to you here today? God has called us to do it differently. Jesus modeled a different way, a different way. He said, the first shall be last. He says, to, to lead means to serve. And to be a Christian, Jesus says, to carry the mark of servanthood in your heart. And so he says to us, take on the same attitude of Christ. Don't be like everyone else. He says, I've called you. He says, you're going you're gonna to be different because I've modeled a different way for you. And so wherever you are in your journey of faith today, my friends, I want to just encourage you to, to carry on this mark of servanthood, to continue to live out this Live out your life from a place of service in your heart. You say yes to God, and then you say, yes, Lord, count me in. I'm here to serve you, because when I move on from this life, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Come on, how many of y'all received that with me today? Let me, let me pray for us. 
Father, come before you here today together. Thank you for the model that you've set before us, Lord. You are not asking us to do anything that you haven't already done. Father, I pray for every one of us, Lord God, including myself, Lord God. Pray that you give us the strength that we need to follow you, to follow the different way that you have set before us, to serve you, to serve others, to serve your kingdom, to serve your purposes, to serve mankind, Lord God, so that others might know who you are. Lord, when we are weak, renew us in strength. When we feel down, lift us up, Lord. When we feel like our, our service is in vain, remind us that our service to you is never in vain. But Lord God, we're not only sowing into this life, but we're also sowing into eternity. Help us, Father, as we follow your footsteps and we continue the legacy of servanthood today in Jesus' name. And Lord, I also pray, Lord, if anyone here today or watching online does not know you as their Savior, have not received you into their heart, Father, let this be their day in Jesus' name. And so, church, let's take a moment right now. See, I, I, I don't know where you're at today or, or where you're at watching online or where you're watching online from. But what I do know, my friends, is that Jesus came for you. You were a part of that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And what we know, my friends, is that, that we've all sinned against God. Every single one of us has fallen short of God's expectation, of God's standard. We need his saving grace. And when Jesus went to that cross, he provided it for us. And now it's up to us to receive what he did for us by faith into our heart. And so let's take a moment to do that together right now. Right where you are, just, just close your eyes and bow your heads with it. If you're watching online, you can join in as well. Let's pray this prayer of faith together. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins and I receive eternal life. Jesus, today, I receive you into my heart. I commit my life to you. Now help me to follow you and to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen, church. And listen, if you have made that decision today or recently, this is a new day. This is a new beginning. Old things are gone. New things are here. God has a plan for your life. He wants to speak new vision and direction into the path that he has for you. So I want to encourage you to keep coming out. Please text that number on the screen. I'd love to send you a free gift to help you in your new commitment that you've made to God. And, and then keep coming out, my friends. Whatever you do, keep following Christ. You get down, get back up again. You miss the mark, get back up and keep on going. Keep pressing in, keep persevering. Trust me, my friends, it is the best thing that we, that we can do is keep following Jesus. Why don't you guys stand to your feet? Let's walk out of here in prayer. Don't forget our prayer team will be here in the front. If there's anything specific you'd like to pray about, our team would be glad to pray with you. We got our first Wednesday service. And then also, as you leave here today, some of our team members have set up some, some of our tables in regards to some of the areas that are available here. If you'd like to get some more information or you'd like to get connected and serving in some way, our team is available to answer any questions that you have. But as you leave, my friends, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord watch over you till we see each other again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll see you guys. Have a good one.